Namaste Srima Sri Aurobindo We have decided to read one of the great book written by Sri Aurobindo that is the synthesis of yoga Mothers once told that a drop of practice is better than the ocean of theories If we want to practice the integral yoga in our life it is very much essential to go through the book the synthesis of yoga because in this book the process of the integral yoga is written step by step if we think about our life then actually it is a life which is governed by the desires passions and many lower vital things in sri aurobindo's language our life is a animal life but our aim is to go beyond to a higher spiritual life or a greater and diviner being so how we can go from this animal life to the higher spiritual life what are the steps we must take for this great journey so every step serially one by one is dictated here in this great book that is the synthesis of yoga when we when we will open the book we will see a publisher's note that means about the book how the book came into the humanity a magazine was published from sri aurobindo ashram from 1914 to 1921 the magazine was arya in that magazine the synthesis of yoga first appeared serially one by one articles came and gradually after many years that is in 1955 sri aurobindo international university center published it as a book for the humanity so from the first appearance till the published till it is published as a book form many years passed many years required for this great thing to come to the humanity after that when we will go to the contents part the first part is introduction and we will see the introduction is five chapters if we open any book in the world the introduction part is one page or two page or one paragraph or two paragraph whatever may be but here the introduction part is five chapters so by this we can know that how the how great this book is five chapters sri aurobindo is explaining that what synthesis is what yoga is what is the synthesis of yoga gradually we will go one by one today we will discuss all the contents inside the book the first chapter of the introduction is life and yoga we are thinking that life and yoga are two different things when we so when somebody wants to do yoga then one image will come into our mind that um the image of a sanyasi who is living in the forest and um, wearing a garb of a garb like a sanyasi so like this a different kind of image other than the normal humanity naturally comes into our mind and when we think a life in the world then the normal image uh, comes into our mind that is uh, doing service and uh, earning money managing his family so from many centuries the yogic life and the normal life are two different things per humanity but by this many 
a disastrous thing happen in the world that um, one can think who will do yoga naturally who who have no desires who have no personal interest who 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 have overcome his lower nature so that means all the good peoples they are doing yoga and gradually they exclude the world and go into the forest or a life of the sanyasi so the rest remains in the world not all i am not telling that all are um, in this world are like this but maximum humanity desires desires are there interests are there personal interests they always thinks about their benefit not the benefit of the humanity or the world so the present situation of the world is due to this because a, a, the good people excluded the world and go to a another life a sanyasi life or a yogic life and other remains like this but this is a great problem for the world so firstly theravinda is explaining that yoga and life are not two different things basically the yoga which is explaining by sri aurobind here is an evolutionary yoga evolutionary yoga means the yoga is going on by the nature and now when the humanity evolved from an animal when humanity evolved from an animal the animal are not of uh, preparing to become the human become a human natures does this by a, by his own power by by his own process so sri aurobindo is explaining that in this world every body even every things the plants the vegetable kingdoms the animals the humanity even the stones even the arts even the galaxies all are in a process of yoga but did but this is an unconscious yoga of nature unconsciously we are in a path in a yogic path but when somebody knows that we are in a path and when he wants to do it consciously then the unconscious yoga becomes the conscious yoga of nature in this first chapter sri aurobindo is uh, telling a, a quotation of swami vivekananda that the yoga is nothing but a shortest period of time we can take an example that uh, we have anger we have desires if we do not enter to the path of yoga it may be with us throughout our lifetime but when we enter into the path of yoga after few months or after few days or after few years we will know that this is a lower thing and we must overcome it so by a power other than humanity by a divine power or by our personal effort we may exceed from the lower things or the lower vital movements to a higher life so by doing yoga the transformation which may require thousands years which may require many lives will just be in a few months or few years or even in few days so yoga is nothing but a shortest period of time another very beautiful sentence in this first chapter that when he gains god he loses life or when he when he turns his effort outward to conquer life he is in danger of losing god so our lives is like this that's why sri aurobindo is telling a very powerful sentence in the first chapter 
दैट इज ऑल लाइफ इज योगा द सेकेंड चैप्टर इज द थ्री स्टेप्स ऑफ नेचर वी आर लिविंग इन द नेचर बट वी डोंट नो वाट आर द डिफरेंट प्रोसेस थ्रू हुईच नेचर इज वर्किंग सो इन द सेकेंड चैप्टर इट सेल्फ सी ओर अरविंद इज एक्सप्लेनिंग अबाउट द नेचर अबाउट द डिफरेंट स्टेप्स ऑफ नेचर इन द थर्ड चैप्टर इट इज द थ्री फोल्ड लाइफ द ऑल द ह्यूमैनिटी विल कम अंडर दिस थ्री फोल्ड लाइफ वी टेक we will discuss about the different um, um the different folds of life the first one is a material life in which the all the thoughts of the humanity are concentrated only in the mat- only in the matter that is to earning money to have houses to have material things so like this the second kind of life is a mental life and in the mental life we take the examples of um poet philosopher scientist artist they are living in in a mental world they are always busy with their mental things we can take a beautiful example of apj abdul kalam can we say that all his life are busy with this lower things can we say that he has uh, um, he has bought many houses in many country or um, he was wanting to um, have many fields on means buy many fields and established different uh, um, structures or different apartments in that his whole life was busy with the mental things for the greater of humanity he never thinks about himself he never thinks about his own development he always thinks about the humanity about his experiment so when we enter into a higher life that is from the material life to a mental life everything changed our thinking changed our doing changed and we the mental life is more higher than the material life the another life that is the spiritual life we see the yogi the sanyasi so these three kinds of lives we will see in this chapters number chapter 4 the systems of yoga there are many systems of yoga that is from that is hatha yoga raja yoga gyana bhakti karma and tantra all the main paths of yoga are discussed in this chapters very briefly but in very briefly what fully it is discussed in the systems of yoga after that we'll go to a chapter that is the synthesis of the systems whatever the different paths of yoga how how we can synthesize them into a single path that is the integral yoga so that the integral development of humanity can be possible by the integration of the different paths of yoga so it is discussed in the chapter 5 of the introduction that is the synthesis of the systems about the synthesis we can take an example of um that we are making mix curry in mix curry different kinds of vegetables we used but there is a proportion that which vegetables will use how much and at what time will uh, put the vegetables uh, one from the beginning maybe some vegetables in the middle and some vegetables in the last if we mix it absorbly then it cannot become a good curry so synthesis cannot be made uh, just to put all the yogic paths in a book or written one by one all the yogic path or um, by mixing it the synthesis cannot be done 
synthesis can be done the main sentence that is in all yogic path there is a central principle so if someone uh, catch the central principle then we can synthesize them so sri aurobindo is uh, entering in all the paths first he got the experience he know the central principles of every yogic path then he, then he synthesized all the yogic systems so this is a great work done by sri aurobindo in his lifetime then we will enter the part 1 that is the the yoga of divine works it has 13 chapters then we will enter part 2 the yoga of integral knowledge and it has many chapters 28 then we will enter part 3 the yoga of divine love it has 8 chapters then we will enter part 4 the yoga of self perfection and it has 26 chapters so the contents of the book is very big gradually we will discuss one by one today we have discussed the introduction part of the synthesis of yoga hope you all um, will be benefited from this bande mataram namaste